We are back. Hey. Welcome back to the Chemist Confessions podcast. I'm Victoria. And I'm Gloria. And this is a human conversation on all the skincare science we talk about on the daily. In terms of today's episode, Gloria, what are we talking about? Ooh, ooh, ooh. So today, well, this episode actually went through a couple of transformations. Mm-hmm. I saw that there's a lot of new niacinamide launches. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, maybe we should do a quick uh, skin. Um, what's new? What's out there? What we think is a yay, nay. Mm-hmm. And then as I was doing my research, I, there were quite a few products that just made me go, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so instead, this is going to be three products, three decodes that make a chemist go, huh? <laughs> I have definitely witnessed Gloria this time around be like, why? 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 <laughs> Why would you do this? Why? <laughs> <laughs> so it should be a fun one. But to start, how about a brand update? Before a real brand update, for those of you who watch your podcast on YouTube, you might know this, that I have one eye that's very swollen. Gloria's so. having <laughs> eye problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, something bit me on my eyelid. So uh, I am going no makeup and a lot of swollen eyes. So if you see me staring at Victoria a lot... <laughs> It's because I only want to show you my not swollen side. She still looks great, so I think we're still good to go. But yeah, uh, in terms of what's going on with us, aside from Gloria's health issues, we definitely are working on a new website, and it is very different. Yes, so this episode should be coming out as of June 12th, and the new website should be launching in that neighborhood maybe soon thereafter <laughs> um but it's time we we are so excited about this redesign yeah. and honestly before for those of you who maybe have your own shop or have worked with shopify storefronts before you know that most people use a th- existing theme and work off of it yeah and what we realize is that one for all the education that we do the layouts don't quite make sense so a lot of times like we don't have all the things we want on the website because it just doesn't work or if we add it it becomes really slow so we're like we gotta overhaul this we gotta do it we gotta do a complete redesign for those of you that have been part of the mr reliable journey we want it all and (laughs) so for this website i think um the main thing was like it's very hard to explore all of the content we create on top of our skincare line. Yeah. So finding a good way to marry all of that together and obviously a very fun style that makes it enjoyable. Um, it has also taken us a really long time. And the design itself, I think for us, is um, a pretty cool departure. But I think also for us is like, wow. This is loud. Yeah. So <laughs> Which <what>? is exciting. <laughs> yes. So the first time our designer showed us the design, yeah. he like warned us. He's like, oh, it's very different. <laughs> and when it popped on the screen, both of us are just like, <laughs> oh, it is. It's, it's different. It's different. <laughs> well, I will say, us were putting um, yeah. the frills on, putting our images yeah. up. I'm like, this is starting to look really good. I'm yeah. very excited. And I think the thing we also love is like, we love all the Easter eggs yeah. that are there. And so for us, we um, wanted to be able to kind of integrate that into our website design. And we hope you guys can find those too. Yeah. And yeah, so one of the reasons why um, we're really excited about the website as well is because we really want to kickstart the incubator. And if you don't know what that is, that's our previous was that we called it the hatchery where mm. we had followers sign up and we got to send them some of our prototypes that we were working on because it really takes a community to make a really good product. Yeah, and for new fans, you might not know that a lot of our existing products actually have been through this process. Most notably, Blank Slate, because it's the two of us. When we're developing prototype, honestly we only have so much skin we can wash and <laughs> really it, though like <laughs> <laughs> and when we finally narrowed down to two formulas we like i'm like Victoria, i can't feel anything can you <laughs> and that's I can't what i'm feeling my soul <laughs> well, so we had to send out prototypes and have the community tell us what they think and help yeah. us narrow down to the winning choice yeah we're really excited <laughs> to get this going again because we've got some new stuff coming down the pipeline um <gasps> <laughs> Sorry. Um, aside from that, um, as a thank you to all of you podcast listeners, please use our promo code CHEMISCOIN to get $5 off your first purchase. We really hope you find something that you love and all the things we created. Yeah. 
no minimum, so you can get <laughs> our experiment mini kit. Yeah. And yeah, let's get into the news. All right, let's do it. All right, first things first, we got to talk about the blip of sunscreen fear-mongering articles that just came out. Yeah, I I feel like we made a joke about this last episode, sure did. a couple episodes ago. It's sure like, ha, 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 every year it's like trends, sunscreen's killing you, and then bam, it's Christmas. Ha ha ha, not a joke. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> there were a couple articles that came out. It wasn't a lot, but it started with um, an article from CNN. Title was, only 25% of sunscreens offer broad spectrum protection without troublesome ingredients report says you know i i think a good <laughs> litmus test uh, we made a little reel about it because we're like oh man we have to respond to this but we like we said in the reel a good litmus test for when an article might be a little yeah. bit too fear-mongering is if the headline make you clutch your pearls <laughs> <Yeah>. and do <gasps> only 25 percent yes it's probably not a good sign yes totally any sort of knee-jerk reaction just worth a, a double take mm -hmm. um there's also another one from bloomberg of all places and i realized that bloomberg launched one sunscreen article every year mm. so if you look at bloomberg sunscreen you'll see 2023 <laughs> 2022 2021 um sorry and i wonder if for the journalist that's like journalistic siberia if you work for bloomberg <laughs> yeah. and you got tasked with doing the sunscreen yep. article yeah yep. <laughs> person's like crap <laughs> oh no yeah Anyways, their title is also very generic. A grand sweeping statement it says there's still scary stuff in sunscreen. You know, it's just so open ended and out there that you're like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I will say maybe it's also a sign that like, man, nothing to see in this recession. Da -da 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 sunscreen. <laughs> also, I really hate their subtitle that says endocrine disruptors and other potentially dangerous ingredients persist despite FDA concerns. Both poking, like jabbing at the FDA and throwing a lot of really scary things in there, like really annoying. Yeah, and for those of you who see these articles and yeah. feel a little concerned, know that there is a lot of ongoing work yeah. to be done. Yeah. There's no denying that. And I think there is like a school of thought where because there's ongoing work, that means we don't know yet, therefore it's bad. But honestly, progress, that's science, right? We're constantly learning new things because there's extra scrutiny and concerns raised about these ingredients. There's going to be extra studies co that come out. Yeah. And uh, with all the ingredients out there, I'm about to say something really controversial. <laughs> 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 they, yes. There are a lot of ingredients that just haven't been looked at the same yes. way. Totally. And one of the things in, with sunscreen that's being looked at is you know, with the bloodstream study that came out a few years ago, mm -hmm. it, it it sounds really scary, but one of the things that the FDA is like, hmm, it's like the amount of concentration of ingredient found in bloodstream that raised concern right now is a one size fit all criteria. Yes. For every ingredient out there. Everything. That's like millions. Yeah. Tons of millions. They're like, hmm, maybe this is not a good way to assess the safety of ingredient. Exactly. Um, let's just say with all things poison, dose matters. Amount, uh, anything all can kill poison. you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anything can kill you at the right concentration. Yep, even right? water, even water, even coffee, even sugar. So it's just about if we're to looking at ingredients in that sense, it doesn't make sense to look at ingredients found in the bloodstream in a one size fits all ma manner either. Yep, exactly. So. With all that, please know that these articles are still out there. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, you know, definitely Gore and I have done a couple videos on this mm -hmm. and sunscreens in the bloodstream a while back that we'll share. And also feel free to email us as well, because we can definitely tell you that for the most part, there is nothing to worry about as of yet. The, the real issue here is that press comes out every day. Science takes like years. <laughs> so. The, there's no way to catch up, you know, and be able to squash all of these articles. Yeah. So it's going to keep coming. And at the end of the day, skin cancer is the proven enemy out of everything. Yeah. And I do want to add that my mini confession here is I am also guilty of a lot of times just reading the headline. Yeah. Because we're all busy. No, yes. Not a lot of people have Same. time to, you know, go through everything. Yes. And I understand, like, these headlines are catchy, but just, just take a pause and know that the headlines really don't paint the full picture here. Totally. 
next thing, we want to take a look at ScarJo's skincare routine very quickly. Yes. So Scarlett Johansson is one of the latest celebrities come up with her own line. Mm-hmm. Her line is called The Outset. Mm-hmm. And obviously, w- uh, along with the launch, you will see some articles out there that talks about her routine. I kind of... I'm not too... Of all the cele- celebrity launches, I'm not too offended <laughs> by this, um, by her positioning It's not all. Gwyneth Paltrow spot treating sunscreen level of bashing. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, because I kind of like that she's very pragmatic. Her yes. routine is very simple. Yes. The outset only has, well, actually, it's a Ling Langer product. And the three products that she's highlights in her routine articles are her gentle micellar antioxidant cleanser, firming collagen, uh, vegan collagen serum, and her nourishing squalling daily moisturizer. Mm-hmm. Other than sunscreen, which she did not talk about in the article eee! at all. E way to sunscreen. <laughs> I feel like it's just... I, I kind of like it. I yeah. like that it's a very simple routine. Yeah, it feels practical where a lot of celebrity, celebrities are not as practical. Yeah, and I will yeah. say even though her routine doesn't mention a sunscreen, I also kind of appreciate that the outside didn't, even though its position was reliable fundamentals, she didn't like kind of push out sunscreen right out the gate just to round it out. And I don't know her reasoning or her man uh her team's reasoning behind mm-hmm. not coming out with sunscreen mm-hmm. right off the right out the gate. But I kinda do like that they're not pushing out mid sunscreen. It's <laughs> just to complete the line. Totally. And I also like in the fine details of the article, she does mention that she has been adding her their outset also has their um, face oil mm-hmm. to her routine during the winter because she has really dry skin. Mm-hmm. And I feel like generally this is a pretty good routine in terms of moisturizing where you kind of have your depending on your daily moisturizer as one and done and then you want to add a little bit of nourishment mm-hmm. and you can like still like basically stick to that routine without having to change it up too much and it's a really great premise to this whole dang topic that we're about <laughs> to talk about yeah yeah cool next more pri- probiotics huh gloria <laughs> yeah so even pre-covid we're like microbiome mm-hmm. is a hot topic in skincare mm-hmm. True to the skincare industry, jogging, running, sprinting before even learning how to walk. It's it's an exciting new frontier of science, but this stuff takes a long time to develop. And there is a new probiotic up, out there. The article when I um the article that I saw when I found this new ingredient was like really funny. It was like it's X Y C M forty two, the new frontier to probiotic. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? I was like, oh XY no, what? Elon named another baby. <laughs> people, people, or maybe it's Robert De Niro's new kid. Oh no, <laughs> he's numbering them now oh, instead. No. <laughs> yeah. Yep, but seems interesting. Yeah, this one, so in terms of microbiome science, mm-hmm. there are two main forks in the road. Yeah. It's either being looked at as more barrier care in general yeah. or acne. Yes. So for those of you who listen to our acne episode, mm-hmm. you'll know that cutie bacteria <laughs> is often thought of one of the main culprits of acne. Mm-hmm. So you have phage technology that came out that's meant to target, oh, okay, we should keep the population of cutie bacteria low. They so want diverse flora. That's yes. the goal. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of work done in that direction. Mm-hmm. But XYCM42 is kind of interesting. It's actually a particular strain of cutie bacteria. Yeah. And so it looks like they perform. This is all very early work. Um, they've done a couple studies. One was a three-week pilot study. Another was an eight-week um, study with about 121 subjects just to look at the efficacy of using these kind of like live, this specific live uh, cutie bacterium strain Mm -hmm. to see if it was helpful. Yeah, and it seems like the preliminary results are uh, are helpful for those with uh, acneic skin, Mm -hmm. but know that this is definitely still very early, Yeah, but we're keeping tabs on it. So for those of you wondering, how is it ever gonna get into skincare? You're absolutely right, because it's a live culture. So putting a live culture in skincare, hmm. So clearly there is still a lot of work to be done. But we should move on. Yep. So we, I actually saw, I saw this article from Shape called Seven Skincare Ingredients You Need to Know. Mm -hmm. And they are retinoids, vitamin C, ceramides, hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and AHAs. And I'm like, oh, there's one of them I could... 
not care about <laughs> oh, but anyway ooh, 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 ooh. which one which one how's run a gas ah yes <laughs> but i was kind of like oh my god even shape.com which would not be my expected source mm-hmm. of skincare science is on to like ingredients that have efficacy the tried and true whereas before it was always like ooh, what's trending or ooh. new or flashy or sounds exotic this exotic oil and yeah. this uh himalayan flower yeah. muru, muru butter. Muru, muru. <laughs> makes my skin so buru buru <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. <Moving> on. <laughs> that was so dumb. <clears throat> That's it. That's all I want to say. I was like, oh my god, even shape duck. Oh, like, ingredient science is so hot. It's yes. now mainstream. <laughs> We're getting somewhere, guys. It's working. And then uh, one thing that Gloria found, and this is really just going to segue straight into the decodes, is CoSRX um, launched their niacinamide micellar water. Yep, I'm just gonna read the ingredients really quickly. Water, dipropylene glycol, polyglycerol fort caprate, panthenol, sodium hyaluronic, elantron, niacinamide, at 1000 ppm, zinc PCA, metacasticide, da 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 So with that, we're gonna move on. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's a micellar water. Don't rely on this as your source of niacinamide. No. I don't really see a lot of point to niacinamide being no. this product. 1 ppm is a really weird notation. Yeah. That is equating to 0.0001. No, it's 1,000 ppm is a 0.01%? 0.01, yeah. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. So, cool. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so with that, uh, we're going to... Actually, we should say that in the meats, we're going to do a little bit more of a deeper dive into niacinamide where the percentages will remind you is really you're looking anywhere between two to five percent max so there you go not even close i feel um, like the news is ending on a whoo yeah <laughs> like oh that's the news guys <laughs> but that's because we really should go through some of these other products so let's go straight into the decodes yep decode today is a theme of three products that make the chemists go <laughs> yep first up this is what I noticed in a lot of new launches. Mm-hmm. Um, Cozorx's niacinamide missile water is not alone. We are starting to see a lot of cleansers with a ton of actives. And we mentioned this in the decode that cleanser claim is where how actives and cleansers just aren't that helpful. Mm-hmm. A lot of the data, actually all of the data, um, is tested as a leave-on for many weeks. Mm-hmm. So if that gives you an idea of how ineffective having that active in a cleanser format would be just washing it off even twice a day um so yes and you know i think that a lot of people do feel like oh well moisturizing actives in cleansers could be more helpful yes and no because if you think about it you're always going to follow up with your moisturizing products yeah so not really um something gloria and i really care about to be honest but yeah let's talk about this one yeah, so I found this one to be one of the most loaded cleanser that's mm-hmm. newly launched. This is a product by Skin Fix, mm-hmm. and it touts 2% salicylic acid, 2% niacinamide, 1% azelaic acid, 3% glycolic acid. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> cool. It feels like it doesn't know what it wants to be. It feels like it wants to be an SEO <laughs> successful <laughs> product. It wants to hit every Google search term possible. Yeah, so I would say this is a cell acid cleanser. Think about mm. it as any other cell acid cleanser. Mm. Um, that is probably the only thing this one can claim. 2% niacinamide, like we briefly mentioned, it's an effective level as a leave-on product. 1% azelaic acid is probably what I'm most offended by because it sounds <laughs> like a lot, but azelaic acid is t- 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 like 15-20%. So what does 1% do in a washout product? Probably Jack Crop. Jack, 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 <laughs> Jack Dilly Squad. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really there just to be like, hi, I'm supposed to help oh, acne. I'm, acid. <laughs> I, the, I'm just the, um, what is it? The ambassador for this acne cleanser. I love, the, I love that line, <laughs> ambassador for acne users. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So for that reason, we would say if you are looking for, I guess, a general salicylic acid cleanser, no problem. If you're buying this because of the other stuff, eh, don't give it too much weight. Yeah, exactly. Cool. We have another one. 
We haven't, we haven't done, done it in a long time. In a long time. A long time. Okay. Old fans will know we used to do products, product <laughs> decodes, and compare them to other expensive products. Yes. And we call the series Price is Right. Mm-hmm. For example, would you rather buy a Dr. Barbara Sturm Hyaluronic Acid or PlayStation 5? I'll tell you, I or, currently own a PS5 <laughs> instead of Dr. Barbara Sturm Skincare. <laughs> or an automatic kitty ro- uh, litter robot. Or tickets to a concert, to a T Swift concert. <laughs> like, I think we also had one that was like, I think the product came with a chalice and it was like a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we used to do that. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. So we decided to get back into it with Augustina's Bader's new launch. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right. So Augustina's Bader launches. <clears throat> drum roll. The retinol serum. Whoa. <laughs> that is so novel and so unique. And for 30 mils, you can have this lovely canister with a copper stand for $350. I've always wanted a <laughs> copper stand. How do they know? It really does come with a copper stand because it looks like the bottle is kind of the shape of a test tube. Mm-hmm. So you must sit it in the canister. It does not stand on its own, which is like as a traveling thing like why i also think like well their cap is flat why don't you put it upside down (laughs) why did you go out of your way to make a stand because their tfc8 peptide will be sad oh okay i'm sorry i'm sorry i didn't mean to hurt your feelings tfc8 but Yeah. yeah We poo-poo on it, but it. to be fair, we will say it does come with a consumer perception and a clinical study. Yep, they did do their homework on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, they The consumer perception claims are 97% agree that appearance of deep wrinkles and fine lines is reduced, 100% agree skin looks lifted, tighter, firmer, 98% agrees that skin looks and feels more smooth, cleared, and refined, and mm-hmm. 98% agrees that skin tone looks more even. That's a perception. Uh, the consumer perception side. They also did a 12-week clinical that touted that skin is more hydrated, 50, uh, the appearance of deep lines and wrinkles reduced by 56%. The appearance of pores was reduced by 95%. That's the one that I'm kind of like, I would like to see the methodology <laughs> because yeah. I ain't nothing erasing pores. I just don't, I don't believe yeah, this one. So, <laughs> so what happened? They just magically don't have pores anymore. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely a weird one. And I have to call out, um, they do share some before and afters, and Gloria shared this with me. And I guess we're now evolving into the next stage of before and afters, mm-hmm. but Augustinus Bader has a before and after. They were they had basically someone, an actual person trying in on their uh, experience. But the before and after are like stylized photos. Mm-hmm. They're not wearing the same... Outfit. outfits the uh, lighting's very different the makeup is different the lighting is different uh the hairstyle is different so all in all when you look at it you're like i guess this serum just changed her life <laughs> yeah she woke up used the serum for just two weeks yeah. and she's like you know what i'm gonna get a new hairstyle and be a yeah, new person she's like, i'm going from corporate to rock star <laughs> <laughs> but kept her earrings yeah yeah so it's a fascinating before and after take yeah i will say the one piece that i was one piece of before and after that i was like kind of impressed by was the redness factor Mm -hmm. they had one where someone had really red and clearly irritated skin before photo and after that was calmed down a lot which Mm -hmm. is not typically what you were you would expect from a retinal product totally that's at 350 you can get like any retinol for like a third of the price exactly exactly i think that's what makes it so hard is like You want to charge them how much for, at the end of the day, the addition of retinol. And Mm. even with all the bells and whistles and all the clinicals, you're still like, it's, I don't know, it's really hard. I, I, it's hard to convince me, let's just say. Yeah. And I will say this is, uh, they also don't tell you the retinol percentage. So even if you're like, oh, you know what? Like I want a lux retinol experience. I'm currently using X percent. I can move on to this product. Eh, I don't know how to tell you like how to gauge whether or not this is the right retinol for you. Totally. All right. And then we have one final product. Yes. So this one was one of my favorites because, again, like (laughs) I mentioned, I wanted to research products, new launches that Mm -hmm. have 
and I sent my. So I went to a bunch of different websites like Derm Store, Sephora, whatever,、mm-hmm. and just filter and search for Nicin. I filter by new. Sierra's Vitamin C Radiance Moisturizer popped up.、So、I looked at the ingredient list, and I was very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let's just go through it very quickly.、Um, so I'll read. It's purified water, cyclopentasiloxane, cetero alcohol, glycerin, calcium triglyceride, sodium PCA, dimethicone. Eucalyptus root extract, polysorbate sixty, SAP sodium ascorbyl phosphate, THD ascorbate, L-ascorbic acid, palmitoyl oil tripeptide twenty eight, retinol, squalene, sodium hyaluronate,、oh, hydrolyzed sodium hyaluronate, resveratrol, ceramide, 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 bisphenol. Make it stop. <laughs>、um, so what made me do double take is I read the claims before I read the ingredient list, and. Sierra claims that the key ingredients in this formula are、mm. tri、uh, tripeptide complex, which we found, and hyaluronic acid and ceramide, which I tried to cut off Victoria with you, <laughs> and cinnamide, which we saw,、yeah. resveratrol, and vitamin E.、Mm-hmm. Wait, hold up! I saw retinol in this ingredient list. Sure did. I did read retinol. That's correct. Why? I, you know, we always tell people that oh, niacinamide、yeah. is one of those ingredients that、mm-hmm. even if it's not claimed, it might be hiding somewhere in the ingredient list. So you might want to like give it, uh, give it a skim. Yep. I didn't realize we were in the realm of phantom retinol. <laughs> I and it's also kind of dangerous because、yeah. there should be lingo that's telling you、um, that sunscreen is required. You know, you want to make sure you're on top of that. Let's be honest. Not the majority of us aren't. And on the other thing is, there's just it. I、uh, I guess there's so many actives. I actually didn't even finish reading before Gloria cut me off.、Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that it's paired with a lot of things that feels problematic, like ellosorbic acid, yeah, with retinol together. Yeah, there's all these things that go in there, and they're like, there's no way all of this works. Yeah, no <laughs> all way. All of this is doing something. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. Is while we like certain combos、mm-hmm. in the same formula, like niacinamide and retinol is a good combination. Vitamin C, retinol, these are finicky ingredients that really should be in their own formulas yeah. to shine. Yeah, it's definitely trying to squeeze a little bit too many. And retinol not being called out was just, I I actually first saw this product on Dermstore dot com. Yeah, I. Actually, double check on Omskin's、uh, Omskin's official website just because I was worried that you know maybe Dermstore dot com made a mistake in the aisle, and lo and behold, it's also on the official website. So,、mm. and the other thing too is some of these do need to be used at significantly higher amounts. Yeah, yeah. specifically the vitamin C's. I know they. It looks like they did do a clinical. So,、um, I'll read some of those results here. Ninety-seven percent. Oh, actually, it's、um, a consumer perception. So, ninety-seven percent of users said their skin felt instantly hydrated after one use. Ninety-seven、mm. percent users showed more hydrated skin at a highly significant level. Okay, and it looks like they had a clinical instrumentation measurement、um, using a corneometer after four weeks. Actually, that's a really weird claim because I think it's it is a measurement. Uh huh. <laughs> but it doesn't tell you how significant that. But is. it is. Just believe it. It just says ninety-seven percent of users, but it doesn't follow up with an actual like improved by what. So that's a funky one. Ninety-four percent of users saw a more even-looking skin tone after four weeks. Ninety-four percent of users agreed to improve their skin's radiance and luminosity after eight weeks. So. Majority is a consumer perception. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yes, and then I just spotted a very important asterisk. Okay, results seen when used with the full vitamin C radiance collection. Ah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. ah, which means that it's not about this product. <laughs> yeah, not at all. So, gosh dang it. Okay.、Yeah. And then I just realized because it was so long, I cut Victoria off. We didn't even get to the niacinamide yet. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was I was starting to hit you with all the ceramides,、mm. ceramide and GNPAP, and then after that we get caffeine because、oh. you totally want caffeine. Who doesn't? No, you you really don't. don't you? People <laughs> think we're serious. No, no. And then after that you hit niacinamide and bisabolol. So 
I know what people might look at. They might look at this if you were looking at the aisle to shop and you might be like, well, I'm getting so much for my money. Mm. But this is where Gloria and I almost feel like it's kind of almost a ruse. And I know that sounds bad, but but it, it to me feels like a ruse. Like I'm not actually sure what I'm getting here. Yeah. So I would say this is a moisturizer. Yes. Nothing less, nothing more. Yes. We mentioned her line before. I think her serums is loaded yeah. with all sorts yeah. of vitamin C. Yeah. I actually am not too offended by that product yeah. but this one in particular phantom retinol and it's just a moisturizer and i i do want to follow up with their how to use where they kind of forget to tell you to use sunscreen again so again if phantom retinol becomes a thing gloria and i are gonna have to continue decoding but definitely it's something to look out for yep those are the three products that make us want <laughs> yeah, and it's a good primer to the meats in the next episode because we want to make sure everyone has a good moisturizing strategy. So yeah, basically, Gloria and I, our jobs are not over. We'll be keeping an eye out for that phantom retinol. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's it for the decode for this week. Let's wrap this episode up with some Q&As. Hell yeah, let's do it. All right. <laughs> After the sunscreen challenge, we definitely got a lot of questions. And our first question is a popular one that we've talked about, but let's review it again. Question one, are sunscreen powders a good reapplication technique for people who wear makeup? What should I do? No, it is not. <laughs> Hi, we are sorry to say sunscreen powders I, are just, just not something we can get behind. Yeah, we when we did the study, we saw that, you know, basically it's almost negligent how mm -hmm. much powder you could brush on. It's really difficult to get a significant amount out. We've actually done multiple studies to show that you'd basically have to have excess powder coating the skin to get the proper amount for that surface area. So again, just a reminder that it's, it's really tough because sunscreens are just not an ideal category. There's no good way of layering it with makeup. Mm -hmm. The formulas are tough. So this is why, you know, all in all, it's just a, it's a difficult category that even Gore and I don't have a perfect solution for layering. Yeah, for, um, for makeup, sunscreen powder. Yeah. Even if you can't get the right protection level, I could have forgiven it if we could weigh anything yeah. from using it, yeah. you know? Victoria and I have obviously a lab skill in our yeah. lab that can measure up to 0 .00, yeah. 0, 0 grams, and we couldn't even get it to register. Yeah. That's how negligible we're talking about. If I'm like, oh, okay, well, at least with one use, you're getting a tenth of the product, I can be like, okay, maybe yeah. not ideal, but you can use it. But this is like non-existent. Yep. Exactly. All right. Next one. This is actually a question about our products, but also is kind of a good concept to think about. So she simply asked, can you mix baby steps with her vitamin C serum during the day? And so, yeah. Yeah. Generally speaking, yes. And I will say I wouldn't necessarily recommend it with gold standard. We do position them as like stronger versus weaker mm -hmm. um but if you're using it during the day i just feel like glycolic acid is a little strong there it's okay it should be okay but i would say it's slightly riskier to sensitize skin but baby steps and vitamin c play in the same ph neighborhood yep. so if you're mixing it fresh in your hand it really shouldn't disrupt your vitamin c very much yeah and I think some people might worry that it can be irritating. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really that the lower pH is really the issue more so. And with baby steps, there is lactic acid in mm -hmm. there as well. Um, so as always, you're definitely sunscreen. Um, make mm -hmm. sure that is a good staple in your daily routine. But otherwise, yeah, I totally agree. It's a good way. And I think sometimes people get caught up and they think about like, oh, AHA should only be used at night because... You know, it makes you more yep. sensitive to the sun. But I, I do want to say that for acne individuals, like that is no one cares about that. Everyone's yeah. like, I will use AHAs when I can in my routine. And that can definitely be morning. So it's like kind of a different way to think about it. Yeah. And just don't forget that sunscreen and you should be good. Yeah. Otherwise, that is a short and sweet episode and primer into next week's <gasps> episode on barrier care. Uh, we hope going through these products was enjoyable <laughs> <laughs> or at least insightful entertaining <laughs>
but yeah uh otherwise where can they find us gloria you can find us on our website at chemistconfessions.com mm-hmm. you can dm us at chemist.confessions on instagram or email us at info at chemistconfessions.com otherwise comment directly on this video and we will see you all next week see you guys thank you